welcome to my channel branches my name is alexis i'm an amateur genealogist in today's video i will be discussing the history of mississippi and this is the first video in my state history series i'm going to be doing and the reason i chose mississippi is because it is my home state it is where i was born where i've lived most of my life the territory of what is today's Mississippi had three major indigenous peoples, the Choctaw, Natchez, and Chickasaw. These are the earliest re recorded humans in the area. Sadly, the Natchez peoples were wiped out in a war with the French garrison at Fort Rosalie, now the city of Natchez. The Choctaw and Chickasaw were forcibly removed from Mississippi and sent to the Oklahoma Territory via the Trail of Tears. In 1540, Hernando de Soto, a Spanish explorer, led an expedition into Mississippi, but because they found no gold or silver after reaching the Mississippi River, he decided to go elsewhere. All about the gold and silver, of course. 130 years later, a small number of French Canadians sailed down the Mississippi River and realized how important the area was. And in 1699, a French expedition led by Pierre Lemoyne d'Aberville established France's claim to the lower Mississippi Valley. The first French settlements were Fort, a fort, I don't know how to pronounce the name, Mobile, Biloxi, Fort Rosalie, and New Orleans. And in case you didn't know, there is a city on the coast of Mississippi named d'Aberville, named after this man. In 1763, after the French and Indian War, France gave up its possessions east of the Mississippi River, with the exception of New Orleans. Great Britain took over the area and they divided Florida into two colonies, one of which, called West Florida, included the area between Apalachicola and the Mississippi Rivers. Fort Rosalie was renamed Fort Panmure and the Natchez district was established as a subdivision of West Florida. After the outbreak of the American Revolution, 1775 to 1783, Spain regained possession of Florida and occupied Natchez. The Peace of Paris Treaties of 1783 fixed the 31st parallel as the boundary between Spanish Florida and the United States. The original Mississippi Territory created by the U.S. Congress in 1798 was a strip of land, it's like literally just strip, oh, I'll post a little picture here, a strip of land extending about 100 miles to north to south and from the Mississippi River to the Chattahoochee on the Georgia border. The territory was increased in 1804 and in 1812 to reach from Tennessee to the Gulf of Mexico. In 1817, the western part achieved statehood as Mississippi. The eastern part became the state of Alabama in 1819. Natchez, the first territorial capital, was replaced in 1802 by nearby Washington, which in turn was replaced by Jackson in 1822. The 1820s and 30s were marked by the decline of the so-called Jeffersonian Republicans, supporters of the political ideals of the Democratic Republican Party under the leadership of Thomas Jefferson, the ascendancy of Jacksonian democracy under Andrew Jackson, and the removal of the indigenous population to Oklahoma. Slave ownership, however, was not common among the numerous small landowners, who generally were Jacksonian Democrats, Rather, it was prevalent among the more influential, though smaller, group of large landholders, most of whom followed the Whig Party, which opposed the political views of Jackson. In the 1850s, however, members of the Whig and Democratic parties of the South made an uneasy truce prompted by the demand in the North for, for the abolition of slavery. The two parties had closed ranks only to defend a labor system that had become a symbol of the Southern way of life. In January 1861, Mississippi seceded from the Union and within a year, the state was in the clutch of the American Civil War from 1861 to 1865. 
The people suffered, the land was devastated, and by the end of the war, the state was in economic ruin. Throughout the period of Reconstruction from 1865 to 77, the following, following the Civil War, and for more than a decade afterward, Mississippi's former slaves and their former owners grappled with the political, social, and economic consequences of emancipation. The white minority could not or would not accept a biracial society based on equality of opportunity. In 1890, the ruling elite adopted a constitution that both institutionalized a system of racial segregation and established an economic order that kept the black population in a position of dependency. World War I hastened the end of Mississippi's physical and psychological isolation. And most of the bitterness remaining from the Civil War was lost in the surge of patriotism. Between World War I and World War II, the state was affected by an agricultural depression in the 1920s, the disastrous Mississippi River flooded, flood of 1927, and the Great Depression of the 1930s. In 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court declared racially segregated schools unconstitutional. That decision was followed by years of legal attacks against racial segregation and by large-scale registration of Southern black voters. In 1955, Emmett Till, a 14-year-old African-American boy from Chicago, was brutally murdered in Mississippi after allegedly, we all know that didn't happen, whistling at a white woman in a local grocery store. And his white murderers, were acquitted of the crime. This event jolted the country and further fueled the movement for civil rights. White Mississippians reacted to black protests, marches, and demonstrations with increasing violence during the early 1960s. In 1962, state, of, state officials defied a U.S. Supreme Court ruling that ordered the admission of a African-American student James H. Meredith to the University of Mississippi. Following a night of rioting during which two people were killed, Meredith was admitted and the color barrier was officially broken in Mississippi. That had to be frightening. I can't even imagine how he felt. <laughs> Mississippi maintained a dual segregated school system despite its unconstitutionality into the late 1960s. Finally, in October 1969, under a federal court order, the state school system was unified and desegregated. By the 1970s, economic development was proceeding at a moderate but steady pace. Outmigration of white Mississippians had virtually ceased, and among the African American population, it had declined significantly. Although per capita income remained below the national average, it still is. It had risen substantially as a result of urbanization, industrialization, and the decline of, in agricultural employment. By the 1970s, economic development was getting better. As someone who has lived in Mississippi most of their life, um, I would like to make a few comments about our state. Mississippi is not the best state to live in, um, especially economically. Um, the minimum wage here is still $7.25, which is the federal minimum wage. And, you know, servers only make 3 to $4, if that, most of the time, and they rely on the tips, which I still think is wrong. Um, it is difficult to find employment many times. Um, and then a lot of times they don't want to pay what um, you should be paid. And while our wages are staying the same, the cost of everything else is going up. Living, rent, utility bills, everything. So it is difficult in Mississippi. Um, I don't know if it has actually gotten much better since the 1970s, honestly. Of course, I wasn't born in the 70s. I was born in the 80s, so I'm not a 70s kid. But, I so I can't tell you what it was like in the 70s. But, um, all I can do is tell you what it's like now. 
And while there are a good many of us Mississippians who want Mississippi to move forward, who want us to progress forward, you know, we don't, we're not proud of our past. We're not. And I'm not trying to get political on this uh, video at all, but uh, many of us want to move forward. And, you know, the people that we elect in there are not doing their jobs. They're not um, doing what we elect them to do. So it's a constant battle with our elected officials. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say about that. I hope, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a like, a little thumbs up there. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Doesn't matter either way to me. Um, leave a comment. Uh, tell me what you think about Mississippi. Let me know. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified when my videos go live. I'll see you guys later.